Hello, everybody. I'm Kat Sellis with the Good Agent team at Keller Williams in Walnut Creek. And today I have one of my favorite people, uh, Gabby George. I've known Gabby for over 10 years. She's a third grade teacher. And uh, um, Gabby, why don't I let you introduce yourself? And okay. I, the reason I brought Gabby here is because we spend the whole day talking to moms who are terrified of the next month or two months being home with the kids and uh, Gabby's a third grade teacher. <laughs> Hi Gabby. Hello everybody. My name is Gabby George and um, yes. Yeah, so Tell us a little bit about you. Where okay. okay, so I will start saying that um, I love children. I have a degree in computers. That's why I moved to the United States in 1996. And that was my first job and I, I love it. But then I uh, put my daughter, when I have my daughter, I put her in a Montessori school. I was living in Mishawaka, Indiana. And I put her in a Montessori school and I was fascinated uh, because it was one of those schools that the children cannot see you. They have like a kind of mirror that you can see and, and I spent like a one hour observing what they were doing and I was just fascinated with what they, how they were working, how quiet, how engaged, how busy and how organized were the kids in the Montessori classroom. So it was a preschool uh, classroom. And that's where I, I start, met you. I met you at Springfield Montessori later Yeah, on. but that was a, the, my beginning was in Indiana. Indiana. Exactly. So I, um, when I was there, I was fascinated with the Montessori methodology and I started taking my training. I was a full-time mom and then I decided to take the training and I became a Montessori teacher. And I'm telling you, when I start learning about that it changed my perspective as a mother big time because um i was not a patient person i didn't have patience with my daughter like for example cooking projects art projects and if she dropped something or you know if we were cooking something and then suddenly she put a lot of flour on the front i'm like oh no 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 okay i'll do it i'll do it i'll do it you go you go and when i started taking my training I learned that that's how kids learn. They learn by mistakes. And we as parents, we have to have patience. And I remember living in Indiana, then I have my baby boy. And in Indiana, there is a lot of snow. There's a big time, seven months of very strong storms. And sometimes we have to stay like two weeks inside the house. You cannot leave because you cannot leave. So there I found myself trying to keep my three-year-old and my one and a half years old <laughs> busy. Oh boy, and without having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> that's going to happen. The nerve breakdown is going to happen. Don't think that you're going to be the super mom, perfect, everything is right. No, you're going to have those days that you're going to be very stressed out and maybe you want to cry but it is it's the only option you have especially right now with what is happening if the only option you have is to be strong you have to be strong that's it and you take a deep breath and i pray that really helps me i do yoga i do walks i like to exercise and try to stay away from the news a little bit, you know, because that can be uh, pretty contaminating for your brain. So what I learned is that with the Montessori methodology, to listen to the children. And that, I think this is gonna be my advice for the moms. It doesn't matter the age. I guess, you know, the older they get, it will be maybe a little easier to get more information. I thought from it was harder for them to listen to you when they're older. <laughs> Maybe just my daughter. <laughs> yeah, they have their days, you know, especially right now with the technology that is totally distracting for them and they're so into that. It is kind of hard. 
But I think that what is going to happen right now, um, there are so many medias. And when you go on Facebook, when you go on the internet, there are so many ideas to keep your child busy that I feel that it can be overwhelming because today I was doing a research, you know, to see what can they do. And I'm like, wow, there is a lot. And there is a lot for you to subscribe and pay. What do you and recommend we do with those kids when we're ready to kill them? <laughs> All the police. No. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that for what I would recommend is to sit with the children and have like a family meeting and listen to them. Get like a board, you know, like a big piece of board, uh, paper with colors. And if you have three kids, you can make like a three columns with the names of each one on the top. You have one, you put one column. And I say, what is your idea? What can we do during the day? What would you like to do? What it will be the perfect day for you? Oh, that's so uh, sweet. Yeah, because, I mean, the, you don't want the kids to feel like, oh, what? Are we going to do this? And this? it has to come from them. They yes. have to participate in the idea. Of course, you as a parent, you know, if they tell you, I want to eat uh, Fruit Loops the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> you can say, well, you know, that can be a good idea, but maybe let's make it shorter. Um, let's try not to eat too much sugar. Of course, you're going to manage their ideas, but try to write everything. Try to write everything what they say. So this and way they, they feel like you listen to them. They feel they are participating. They feel they're part of the meeting. They feel they're, they're leaders. And uh, when you're talking about let's do chores, uh, what kind of chores would you like to do? Which one would you like to do? Because we have to do all these chores. I mean, with children, you have to give them options. We have this and this. So, of course, those two options are going to work for mom. So whatever they decide is going to work for mom. Or for This is actually very funny you said that because I remember reading um, Robert Kiroyasi. He used to say teach them to make decisions early in life like don't tell them what you want for breakfast say would you like cereal or would you like bananas this way they learn to make choices to make choice exactly and the choices have to be something logical there has to be something that it works for that time so of course you know with the technology that is part of their life we have to add a little bit during the day so I will say to leave it at the end of the day so so they can see that's a like a prize like a consequence when they're doing all the things that they have to do for the daily schedule and oh. there are so many ideas you know on the internet of what to do like I found one and um, that it says COVID-19 daily schedule and it was on Facebook and they recommend, you know, to wake up in the morning, eat breakfast, make your bed, get dressed, put your PJs um, in the laundry. Then from nine to 10, they have a morning walk, which I think is a great idea, especially here in California with the beautiful weather. We're so lucky mm -hmm. uh, to go. If you have a dog, you know, go walk the dog, or just walk with the family. Then from 10 to 11, academic time and no electronics allowed during that time. And they can, um, depending on their level, you know, they will do whatever academic activities they have to do. 11 to 12, creative time. So arts, uh, Legos, and um, whatever is their passion. You know, maybe you can also teach them your passion. What do you like to do? Uh, then they can have lunch. Then at 12.30, they can do short time, you know, like cleaning the tables, wiping here, wiping there, because with the virus situation, you know, we have to keep everything nice and clean. Vacuum. Yeah, vacuum, exactly. From 1 to 2.30, quiet time. So they can choose what, you know, reading puzzles, but no electronics during that time. Then from 2.30 to 4, they can have an academic time and they can use electronics. So they can have iPad games, whatever is on the iPad that is um, helpful for their education. There are so many right now. 
then from four to five afternoon fresh air so go for another walk go for a bike uh play outside basketball from five to six dinner time and they can help with the dinner you know they can help uh cooking the dinner that would be great from a from six to a free tv time and because they need that you know they they want to have their favorite show they want to they want to feel that they have a prize for the end for all their effort and eight o'clock or between eight and ten i guess depending on the age bedtime because that that one is very important and then mom and dad they will have their own time and i think that also very important is to take care of ourselves because if you don't take care of yourself how are you going to help your child so there has to be time for mom that even if it's really early in the morning or sometime during the day that you can do whatever is gonna charge you emotionally and relax you so then you can take care of your children so that's that was beautiful now you teach third grade right i teach uh from first grade to fourth first grade. grade oh my yeah. goodness so you have because, experience you know, montessori is um mixed ages so where i teach at eagle peak we have lower elementary which goes from first to third grade then we have upper elementary which should go from four to sixth grade oh and then they have another building with the teenagers that goes from seven to eighth grade oh and uh, i'm teaching on the lower elementary classroom and i'm running the whole program for the spanish for the school but i'm starting right now with first second third and fourth grade and it's it's very exciting because i have before that i have like 13 14 years of experience with preschoolers and that's where i met uh cat and her beautiful daughter and that was really an amazing time in my life i i love it we, I had, love it. we had fun we have fun and the the girls learn remember cat the, the class was a lot there were a lot of girls <gasps> That was beautiful. I remember you that. You entertained us. That was great. <laughs> what other things do you recommend when we're all locked inside and we are just bored to death? I was thinking today my things that I used to do with my grandmother, right? Yeah, exactly. Let's think about that. You know, the times when we didn't have any devices. What, what did we do? What did you do, Kat? We used to make pasta together, <sighs> homemade pasta. We used to make yogurt, we used to bake bread. Like those are like some of my best memories. Yeah, you know, I feel that even though this is a harsh time, something really good is going to come out of this situation. And I feel it's going to be that connection with uh, the parents, with their children. My goodness. Because, yeah, yeah, I think it's going to happen something really beautiful because the the you know the life life is so busy you know dropping the kids at school picking them up late from childcare go to work and then spend some time with them at home and a little bit on the during the weekend the sport time the piano the ballet the tap dance and then boring time there is no boring time now there's gonna be plenty and I think that this is gonna be a great time for the kids with their parents to connect. That's and amazing. It's crazy too. <laughs> That's amazing. I have a little um, notepad next to my bed that says, wouldn't it be great if, and every time we get a great idea, we just write it down because it's so, so easy for you to get busy and forget. Yeah, exactly. And I would recommend also at the end of the day, because I do that with my students and I know that it really helps have like a meeting like a call it family time or peaceful talk mindfulness time whatever you want to call it where you guys sit on the floor on the living room and everybody's like a circle and then you can have like a like an object it can be a stuffed animal it can be a flower it can be something and you're going to hold it and you're going to ask uh, to the all the family members, what was the most important thing that you learned that day, during the day? And they can talk about what 
what do you like the most what you didn't like so the person that is holding the object is the one that is going to talk and the i other love that listen. yeah that is the other nice to listen because it is also teach them to have patience and wait for their turn you know because that's when they have the the object and then they can talk so um that can be a really nice idea actually for family times for I love that. before they go to, they, before they go to bed I love and that. lots of reading you know and try like you know in the schedule that i saw try not to i will send it to you if you want the thank the you like the cherry yeah because i was looking online i i really like this one and um, they um that the most important listen to the children's ideas because sometimes parents we think that we know everything and you have to listen to me wow we are very surprised i am sometimes very surprised as a teacher when the ideas come from the students and they show you a different perspective that you didn't have any idea and that makes them feel really empowered when you recognize that and you're like wow that's a great idea i really like that we can do that and yeah learn to listen and have fun have fun have fun and um we should also take a minute and every day and just remember all the things that we're grateful about um mm -hmm. yeah exactly this is not a tornado it's not an earthquake maybe not the things that it, it's not but maybe the things that it is it's an opportunity for us to slow down and spend time with our families yeah right? and you know i saw in from all the thousands of pictures that they show on facebook is the only social media that i have i only have facebook i saw one that it really catch my attention it says our grandparents were sent to war to save wow. us and they're only asking us to stay home with our pajamas yes <laughs> and then when you see when you compare that you're like wow that's true this is not hard at all <laughs> this is not hard at all and i it for me has been a little it's it's a little hard because my daughter you know that no? she joins the u.s marines yeah thank you for I, your service I thank you and she's been there for two years and we are so excited to see her but now they're changing the dates because she's in deployment and she might come back they said at the end of beginning of April maybe at the end of April so that's giving me a lot of anxiety because I really want to see my daughter and uh, I can wait and then when she comes I'm just thinking about what is going to happen I was still going to be in lockdown uh, if she will be able to come here, but I'm like, okay, I'll put in your hands, my God, and whatever will work, it will work. So I'm I'm excited about that. Hopefully, it's oh. all gonna be over very very soon. Well, yeah. Gabby, I wanted to say thank you for spending uh, some time well. with us. You're one of our heroes. We oh, love you, thank you. <laughs> and um, we're very grateful for all your great advice. Thank and you. I wish I was back in third grade and be your student because you're amazing. I thank you, Kat. Thank you. Thank you yes, so much. Of course, you're very welcome. And I wish good luck to everybody and hang in there. And we are going to win this. Yeah. Yes. We just need to be um, make smart choices. Yeah. Thank you. Have a you're good day. Welcome. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.